I put it up. I love it. Thank you guys. And you are you are not wasting your energy because this next guest is going to absolutely blow your mind. She is one of eight people who spent two years sealed in a tiny artificial world known as Biosphere Two. Now, no, no, no. oh. oh. And that's just the beginning of it. We're going to keep moving up from there. After we closed that, the doors in here this evening, by the way. There's no getting out. We're here for two years, everyone. <laughs> Hope you like your beats. Whatever we can make. So after leaving Biosphere 2, she founded, co-founded Paragon Space Development Corporation. Now, that company develops technologies for extreme environments, such as going into space, such as yep. going deep underwater. And you co-founded it with... Tabor McCollum, who's now your husband, yes. and you actually met him inside your two-year experience in a bubble. Of course, yes. <laughs> but it's going strong. So yeah, so anybody who has dating, if you have dating problems, it's a solution that works for one. So we can try again. Um, and then in 2009, she was also named Female Entrepreneur of the Year by the NAFE. And today, she is here to talk to us about our chances of going into space. So she is now going to talk a little bit about Worldview Enterprises, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a number of things. But the main thing is that this new company is going to give regular people like us, except with a lot more money, the chance, <laughs> the chance to go into space. But so for that rich guy in the audience, this one's for you. Please give it up for Jane Pointer. Thank you very much for coming out. The space music, yeah. Have you thought about the soundtrack for being in space? Have you thought about what music you want to play for them while they're up there? Oh, uh, wow, that's a really awesome question. So um, <laughs> I was talking with Mark Kelly, who's also uh, involved in this, astronaut Mark Kelly, and he was talking about the power of music. And, and uh, one of the most powerful experiences he had on the biosphere, uh, up in the station uh, emotionally, was when they were pulling away from the International Space Station. And the shuttle kind of does this whole beautiful arcing away from it. And they turned on the Space Odyssey music oh, and, and, he said, and it was coming. just the most incredible thing so yeah yeah well I mean I mean you know like what you think will change in people's brains when they see the blue marble from well so what I could talk about it was what my experience was when I was inside biosphere 2 so I can okay. talk about that personally which is from a completely different vantage point but I think that it kind of gets it at this same experience. So, you know, you're stuck inside this biosphere for two years, and you are completely reliant on your biosphere for your life support system, and it's incredibly literal, your connection to your biosphere. So as I'm breathing out, I'm breathing CO2 into the plants that are growing to provide my food, and we ate so many sweet potatoes that we turned orange, so we were literally oh, yeah. coming part <laughs> sweet potato, visibly. Um, but that connection to the biosphere that I lived in and, and relied on just completely changed my relationship to the biosphere that I live in. You know, the, the biosphere out here is so big, it's a leap of imagination right. to think that we're part of it, right? So it really did transform my view of this it made world, the world that we live tiny, in. Right? It made the world sort of it, it, it makes you appreciate that this world we live in it is fallible, that, that, that we as a species can make an enormous impact. And of course, now it's incredibly obvious that we are. But right. back when we were in the biosphere in the 90s, there was still enormous debate about, you know, my god, it's hubris to think that humans are having you know, right, global right. impact, what kind of right? Impact could we have? Right, we're exactly. But but I was I was inside Biosphere Two, really experiencing that on a day to day in a in a micro fashion, and so now you you take yourself out, and and that was looking at the biosphere we live in from the inside out. Right. in essence, right? But whereas astronauts, when they're up in space, they're now getting the completely the opposite extreme experience. They're looking at this incredible world in this biosphere we live in from the outside in. So right. they're getting that sort of overview effect. I guess. Of this this is your next challenge. World. You're like, I've seen the, I've seen the small yeah, one. Yeah, now, now I want to see yeah. the big one. Right, I want right. to see the big one from the outside. Yeah. Right. So, and so when you speak to astronauts about this amazing experience of seeing the world, I mean, they really do talk about it like this amazing transformative experience. Experience. 
I, and that's that's what I hope that we can really deliver to people when they go up on this. No, that's, I mean, so, well, so real quick, when when I did that intro and you were like thinking about the time you lived in the biosphere and the company you built, is it seem surreal? Like, do you, are you connected <laughs> to your history? How did it transform you? Like, what do you think the lesson was that you can oh. really share the, oh. end, the end of the story with us? Golly, how how do I even begin? Is it in the nuances of your whole life? Like, do you tackle challenges the same way? Well, so for or one thing, it? going inside biosphere two is a little bit like having two years of therapy. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're, you, it is, I have never been in a monastery, but you're imagine right, this. A so no, so okay. imagine this. So you are thrust, into, so here we are, you know, every life we are, particularly here, you know, there is so much impressions that hit us moment by moment, right? Okay. You know, everything that's around us. Now throw yourself into the biosphere. The only thing I had to worry about on a day to day and carry around day to day was a pair of pruning shears and a two way radio. And then I was, you know, shoveling potatoes. So, I mean, it's incredibly simple life. And so that strips away everything that distracts you from all this stuff oh, yeah. going on inside in your, inside your head. So well, you're kind of left with everything that's yammering on inside your head. So sooner or later, you, you have control? to deal with it. I mean, did you, so you got control of them. Oh, God, no. We completely acted out. Oh, we okay. were terrible. <laughs> we were awful. We were just really heinous. Um, so. Uh, it, 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 of course, to some degree, yes. I mean, it yeah. really thrust it in my face. I mean, at one point, I thought I was going a little bit mad. I mean, it turns out that there is a whole constellation of things that happen to people when they go into isolated, confined environments. That's right. what it's called. It's the whole branch of psychology. And, you know, you go really a bit batty. And so at one point, I thought I was going so mad that I actually got myself a professional psychologist to help me because I just, I, I, blame I, you. Yeah. I was like, help. I would have had one before going in. Yeah. Well, you would have think we there. would have, right? You would have thought we should have. Yes, indeed. I think we probably should have. It would have been wise, I think. So, so did, when when your thoughts are clear, is it abundance of creativity? Like, tell me about like the sweet potato you were eating in the middle. The enti <laughs> like the entire, like one year in, you're sitting there eating sweet potatoes. Like, what what was your thoughts like at that moment? I hate everyone. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I mean I, I'm joking. It, it 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 really did go from you know to, I mean probably the same kinds of things as we all do. I mean you're yeah. probably wanting me to say. Oh, it was this know, incredible yeah. Zen moment, and my well, mind I mean, as was soon clear. As you got out of there, you started a big I don't company, think my so. mind does that. So, gotcha. other okay. people might yeah. have had that experience. <laughs> okay, well, so, so let's talk about uh, you meet your husband, you guys start this company. Why did you want to do Paragon? What made that? Oh, yeah, so when we were inside the biosphere, so you might think of the biosphere in some sense as one of the very first commercial space flight companies okay. because it was a prototype space base. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so it was a NASA budget? It was, it was not. It was okay. completely privately funded, but it oh, was intended to be that. a prototype space base. So it would be as if we were on Mars and we had this amazing biosphere on Mars. That was the fantasy I was living out inside the biosphere in a way, right? I would that sit still, on the beach. Not, it could still happen, right? Yeah, right, Very of course. Cool. Yeah. And I would sit on the yeah. beach and there was this incredible space frame. <laughs> I mean, it was like, you know, a, a, an amazing sci fi movie. It was like, you know, silent running. I would sit there. And I'd look out through this amazing glass and steel structure. Yeah. And you know, there were the mountains outside, and you couldn't see anything else. And at night, it was for all the world. We were on Mars. Yeah, no, it was just it was an amazing thing. So we were in the oh, biosphere. That is to think about. Yeah, and so we were in the biosphere, and we're like, okay, so what are we gonna do after this? And we're like, well, you know, we're pretending to be on Mars, so why don't we actually try and actually go to Mars? <laughs> so we started this company, not with the idea necessarily, we weren't quite so audacious to think that we would. We, I think at the time, I assumed that it was, even though I was a great proponent and always have been my entire adult life, a great proponent of commercial space, I assumed that going to space would have to be a government. Going to Mars would have to be a government program. Oh, and so when did that switch? So, right? well, we've got several programs that are yeah. uh, talking about going to Mars, right? And there's Mars One that is you know, a one-way mission. You can all sign up to go to Mars <laughs> if you want right now on a one-way mission. Um, and so, so that that's really cool. So that's completely privately funded. I mean, you know, they've got enormous challenges to go from here to there, but right. by no means a slam dunk. But nonetheless. It is a private group thinking about going to space. And then there's Inspiration Mars, which is another nonprofit. It's a nonprofit endeavor um, that is attempting to go to Mars. So, so Paragon was about trying to do a lot of the life support systems and, and all of that right. that, would, that would get us so to Mars. Qualified yes, to exactly. Work, That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about uh, world view enterprises. So um, if you could talk through a couple of these slides, it'd be great. Um, so basically, this is what you want. 
our rich friends to get into. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so this is the view, right? So you 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 go up. It takes you about an hour and a half to get up to this altitude, and you're for all intents and purposes in space. You're above 99% of the atmosphere, so the sky is completely black. You're gonna just have this most mind-boggling view of the heavens, and then the sun rises, and the sun is gonna come over this beautifully curved horizon, and now you're gonna start seeing that, you know, where the, right, the, the day playing, encroaches. Yes, of course, like exactly, the, yeah, the exactly, lights, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and the day starts encroaching on the night below you, and so you're in this completely sealed capsule. And maybe you're sitting there drinking your martini or a cup of coffee or whatever it is that's your favorite beverage of choice, looking out at this incredible spectacle. And above you is this enormous balloon. Okay. And, and so here's a balloon, and it's about the size of a football field. Okay. So it's ginormous. This is 15 million cubic feet that is taking you up there. Wow. And so you, you are up there for a couple of hours. And then um, as you start coming back down, uh, you begin to descend. And then this here is, it really turns the whole capsule into a glider. So it's a parawing. So it's a, it's a, it's a parachute that you can steer. And it's out okay. all the time. And so as you start coming back down, you let go of the balloon. And now you've turned into a glider. And you can steer it. And you just steer this thing all the way back down to your landing site. And then, so do the, they the separate? And eventually yes, you they okay, separate. And then, and and then go, this has to come back. Yes, this comes back down under its own guidance system. And, and we go and retrieve it. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow, that's going to be. And so uh, where do these launch from? How many people do you think fit? Yeah, so inside of it uh, is going to be six passengers, two crew. Um, of course, a pilot, because you actually steer the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't want to go yeah. without a pilot. That's no, good. you're, you're yeah. going to need a pilot. <laughs> uh, and um, so we're looking at a number of different launch sites. We probably will have several. We're making it very flexible to, for uh, where we can launch from. One of them is, is that we're looking at is Page, Arizona. That's not too far from here. We're also right. looking at other sites in, um, in Nevada and then in New Mexico. There's, there's a number of different sites. Mm. That, that we're looking at. This is yeah, it's just absolutely incredible. I've done this vacation before. <laughs> Nobody's done that experience. So, I mean, it'll truly be mind blowing when it when it gets up and running. And you're hoping 2000. End of 2016. 2016. Yes, and not yeah. too long from now. Okay, so um, certainly people can check out the website. They could follow Twitter. But what other calls to action would you say to people if they want to just learn more about the project? Yeah, go to worldviewexperience.com. We haven't quite got all of our social media up, but we will actually in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Yep. And uh, there'll be lots to find out about. We've got some really fun test flights coming up, and we'll be sending information out about that. So that's going to be really fun. That is, yeah. I just can't even imagine. I mean, <laughs> you, you, must, you must have very be able to close your eyes. Can you close your eyes and just see the whole thing right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I bet. That's... I don't have to close my eyes. It's there in front of me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just going. <laughs> we're, we're just going to make this happen through a force of oh, will. That's awesome. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming out. We get a big round of applause for it. Thank you very much.